Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Thursday, March 8th at 11.07 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the GFS total snowfall, including sleet and inches, predicted for the next 10 days for North America, the continental U.S. I want you to take special notice to this snow event hitting the northeast and by the end of the 10 days showing massive snow back in the northeast. Just in the next three days we have this major snow event here in the mid-Atlantic that could bring up to 16 inches. Now the last model that predicted snow up here was off by one-third. <laughs> Let's get these annoying things away here. So let's just run it through and take a look at what happens in the Sierras right here. So from Tuesday, March 13th to the 17th, over five feet of snow or more could hit sections of the Sierras here. It could be epic. So we're going to see major snows east and west coast as well as Colorado here late in the model showing several feet where I am coming up to us at March 19th just two days before spring so heads up we'll be back to that winter storm Quinn walloping the Northeast killing three hundreds of thousands remain without power second nor'easter to hit and look at what's coming folks here is the remnants of Quinn 995 right there. Let's get rid of these annoying points here. Okay, here is Quinn, and let's just take it through a few days. Look at the storm develop right here. Monday, we're talking Sunday night, developing just south of Indiana, the low, into Monday is going to bring another major snow event up the Northeast, starting at the Mid-Atlantic, New Jersey, Philly is going to get a hit again, Boston, New York, Long Island, you're talking 10 inches maybe, 6 to 10 inches, and it's going to go up to Maine. So we have a third, a trifecta of nor'easters hitting late in March, and that's a heads up. Let's talk about Quinn. Much of the region is still feeling the effects of the last nor'easter, and another one's coming in three days. We're going to talk about perpetual people in darkness for weeks. Several people have been killed. This may be the wake-up call that's going to take millions of people's heads out of the buttocks as power slowly being restored after winter storm Quinn strikes New Hampshire. Vermont, the hardest hit, totally underestimated the storm there. And now we have freeze warnings Thursday night in Birmingham and across the south. Look at this area in purple for freeze warnings. We still have some lake effect snow here. They're going to be breaking all-time records in this region. Cleveland already getting crushed. And look at all the freeze warnings coming out here in the southwest. Frost all the way down into almost central Florida here. East central. Frost warnings. And as we get on into the week, uh, later into the model here, this cold is going to get a little further down towards so South Florida. So heads up, South Florida. You might be in the 40s next week. Run through the GFS model. We see that nor'easter building Monday and running its way up the coast into Tuesday. with some blustery winds behind it into Wednesday. It's going to be very cold, according to the models. And then here we see the cold dropping. The freeze line is all the way down here in the south again, pushing all the way into Florida here. So the 15th could be pretty cold in North Florida. And we have another event coming into California. So you're not going to be left out of the moisture here. Look at that rain event predicted by the 16th of March. More heavy snow for the Sierras. Heads up, we're in an interesting pattern called the Grand Solar Minimum. And I think a lot of people are going to wake up here, including those people. We predicted that there, this year would be record-breaking snowfalls of all times in British Columbia, and we were correct. 
the the information is in record snowfall since all times. Vernon Ski Hill has cumulative base of more than 630 centimeters. They're going to be skiing until August. It has the largest recorded snowfall in 68 years. The North Okanagan Ski Resort has been inundated with locals and guests around Canada visiting to take advantage of its record-breaking snowfall since it took measurements in 1950. There is no doubt it has been a very special season. <laughs> you can barely see the tops of light posts and street signs poking out of glacial snowbanks. Look at this car. Unfortunately, that guy parked there. According to its website, the resort has an alpine snow base of 266 centimeters, 209 centimeters in the village, and a cumulative base of 637 centimeters. The second greatest snowfall at Silver Mountain Resort was recorded in March 1974 at 274. That's a heads up. That's just not going to cooperate. Study Gunma volcano erupted more frequently than thought. This is the ski resort, which we refer to as Mount Moto Shirane that killed the skier and injured many others. Well, heads up, they just went and looked at it and they said, oh, it erupts more than we thought. We probably shouldn't have put a ski area there. Oh my goodness. If that's what we're talking about, then that's what we're talking about. Take a look at the snow here, the record snow. Let's just come over and run through some of this fun footage. That looks pretty deep. There are the street signs covered. These are cars, folks. And that's an advertisement. So that's a boom. Record snow in BC, like we predicted. Let's talk about a volcano update. Volcanoes today, we have Ducono Volcano. Turialba is continuously erupting since we reported last night. It has not stopped. We also have Fuego, Reventador, Mayon, and Kirishima. Now, Kirishima in Kyushu has stopped erupting. We have coverage of that, but we also have uh, from Yuki Z some Popoca Tapeto footage, which we'll let parse up and maybe we'll get a quick view. There's been a rare 5.6 earthquake that hit Mozambique, followed by a 5.2. I meant to mention this the other day. And then it popped up, this 5.2 popped up today, and we're talking this region right here. Uh, this is in the Rift Valley zone where they mine diamonds in this region. So it could be associated with normal faulting and, again, the expansion of the Earth. So as the magnetosphere wanes and more solar wind gets to enter our poles, we could be growing. Well, we are accumulating mass, and this could be part of the spreading of the Earth. The rifting here is normal faulting, just like it happens at the mid-ocean ridges. We also have a major aftershock in Papua New Guinea. Not looking good. This one is not at the main island. It's offshore. So here's the Bosavi volcano and where the main aftershocks were occurring, causing more landslides in recent times. Nothing in 24 hours over 2.5 magnitude. But we have this major shock coming out here in this island. Taron, Papua New Guinea, 20 kilometers east-northeast, and some aftershocks. So heads up to the people on that island. It's got to be scary living out there. We just had an uh, earthquake tick off here, a 4.5 west of Petrolia, California, one of the largest offshore Cascadia quakes in some time. Let's take a look. It's happening now while we're making the video. I've never seen a 4.5 make a tsunami. So we'll just head over to the Tsunami Warning Center and see what they're saying about this 4.5. Minor quake, but still there's no threat or warning. And they're getting in and out of 4.1 at the downgrade service already calling this a 4.1 even though we're looking at 4.5 so make a note of that other than that there are no quakes of note 
except the 6.8, which is quite significant. We have some mid-ocean ridge activity here, shifting on plate boundaries. 5.5 in the West Chile rise, and here in the middle of the plate in the Southern Pacific Ocean, the middle of nowhere. So that's interesting. We got some rare quakes happening in some weird places, as predicted. And the good footage of Popo is to the middle here. I recommend you come over here to Volcano Watch. We'll leave you links to this video, and you can load it up for yourself. Uh, you can see in the box up here that in the last 24 hours, Popo has been quite active. And they're not reporting on it at Volcano Discovery. I don't know why. Now, this is a volcano that is near a huge population density, which is uh, could be very catastrophic. And this was definitely going to go off soon and will not be good to the millions of people that live just miles away from this. It has been recently showing lava fountaining or bubbling, which is what we're looking at here. This is a nighttime video. So Popo has a lava lake up in that caldera and it is just waiting to blow. And as the cosmic rays increase, I think that Popo Catapeto could be one of the major eruptions and catastrophic events that we see uh, coming very soon. Let's talk about this sent in by one of our subs, earthquake frequency versus years. This is magnitude 7 plus. We've already had five this year. If we keep on with this, it's going to be above 24, which is over here. So this spike this year should be up in this range which is keeping with the slope. And you can see since the centennial minimum, an increase in volcanic uh, earthquake activity. Major earthquake frequency versus year. And it's also packaged in these spikes. And I went and did a little research, and these spikes correspond to solar minimums. High cosmic ray flux, major earthquakes at these spikes. These are solar minimums. This is the solar minimum of 23. And we're in the solar minimum of 24. So we should be getting another spike up in here at some point. In the next two slices should be a double spike. And that's a heads up. Thanks for making that. Coming out of the State Department, warning of a security threat in Playa del Carmen. And I went to this city about 20 years ago. It was completely uh, unknown. But now it's overridden with tourists. Stay away. This popular resort city is being declared extremely dangerous for reasons unknown. So if you know people in this area, tell them to get out of Dodge. Easily go up to Cancun. It's a two hour taxi ride north. Get out. I don't know what's going on there. Long winters are coming in reality and will partially blunt global warming for 50 years. Well, isn't that convenient? No one will be alive in 50 years to corroborate this article. But what they are uh, leaning towards here is admitting that uh, the science is out, that the sun is going silent, and that the minimum is real. And this is more from the mainstream warning of the coming cold, and they're just crossing their fingers that a volcano will erupt so they can blame it on that and still tax you for global warming in the middle of an ice age. That's a heads up. Let's talk about early sun pits, but real quick, let's come over. Oh, let's talk about early sun pits here. Look at this drawing. This is where the Wallapini Low Dome greenhouse idea comes from. There's different techniques here, but here we have dark colored stones buried in a solar frame. The sun is heating the stones, and the heat rises to sprout the propagation trays. This is a very ancient technique but it's a very modern effect, and we need to return to these old styles. This is an interesting dug-in green, greenhouse solar frame where you can get uh, up to two months of extra zone in your area, done in the Victorian era with a dirt floor, and it has been upgraded into modern versions, the solar greenhouse being one which we're going to be incorporating here and already have in a geothermal version that we've made with a similar shape, Insulated rear wall, correct sloping glazing, and a climate battery in the bottom. We are also going to be installing a, ma a massive Wallapini-style uh, 
Chinese or Asian style solar greenhouse from iGrow and we're going to be promoting that and we're going to be uh, sharing with you how to install it and use it and we're going to see the performance of that particular device which is cutting edge technology. You can also just attach one of these solar structures to the side of your house to provide your house with extra heat. I'll leave you links to this particular uh, figure there. You can build a $300 underground greenhouse or wallapini that grows food year-round. And I'm going to leave you links to this amazing article, Do-It-Yourself Plans Video Infographics about the wallapini, an underground greenhouse that lets you grow year-round. Here's an example of one. It's all different types. Um, here's a peaked roof version that they're just using some plastic. This is the basic idea where you have the 54-degree earth temperature to maintain constant heat in this greenhouse and allowing nothing to freeze. At night, the lowest it can be down here at ground level should be around 54 degrees. And during the day, the solar gain is heating the ground, so it stays well above that for most of the night in any environment. And there's some videos here on some natives using this technique. There's design examples. Uh, multiple versions of the solar lean-to wallapini here, um, some digital reconstructions, just a bunch of happy people growing food underground, which is I think where we're going to need to be in the future, guys. I hope you got something out of the video. Please share this with like-minded people. The wallapini is a thing of the past and a thing of the future. There's modern ways at low on low budgets to create amazing things to thrive and survive in the future. The future is not so bright when it comes to cosmic ray increase and in our health. You want to move away from the northeast and down here into the southwest. There is information that is coming out in recent times to show that this area is the most affected by the cosmic ray increase. So that's a heads up real quick. Um, also, we have the mainstream including Lee, Dr. Lisa Upton, a plat, uh, solar physicist, leading the field worldwide, saying that cycle 25 prediction that I'm showing you right here on the graph is correct. It will be 30% at a minimum less magnitude than cycle 24. And that's as far as the mainstream is willing to go. We're willing to say that cycle 26 may not exist. And at that point, we're going to have a magnetic reversal here on Earth. Our magnetosphere might wane. To 10% or less, and we will be in unprecedented territory. If we haven't had a VEI 7 by then, I will be very surprised. So be prepared for the worst to happen at any time. Start preparing, learn about wallapinis and growing food, and you too can serve and thrive in the coming times. Thanks for watching. Share this with like minded people, and be safe, everybody.